Hi everybody and welcome to sort of an impromptu live stream. I am in the midst of another home clear out, but while I was at the auction dropping stuff off, I thought what better chance do I have to give you guys sort of an auction preview of the stuff that's up right now? Um, so we emptied out, I think I called it the Ballerina's House series. It was the last house clear out series and all kinds of antique stuff came out of there. I wanted to show you guys kind of how much stuff came out of there all together. Everywhere I look all around me, I'm surrounded by cool things. Um, also, this is kind of a two for auction because the second part of it is that um, uh, my son and I, Jason, we went down to uh, the Medicine Hat area, bought a really big toy collection, uh, visited an abandoned uh, grain mill or grain elevator, and came back with all kinds of cool vintage toys, and that's up at this auction too. So um, we are going to do a little walk around, a little preview, so I'm going to flip the camera around, and you won't see me for a couple minutes here, but I'm going to be talking and away we go. So if you watched this last series I did, not the one I'm starting right now, but the one before, you'll know that we found all kinds of jewelry, the uh, gold-plated nurse's watch that clips onto your, uh, onto your uh, wardrobe. There's uh, gold earrings and necklaces, cameo sets, rings galore, uh, antique purses, uh, and then there's all sorts of other stuff too, like these Tiffany style lamps. And I say Tiffany style because they're a little bit newer, but they're still really cool. Uh, we've got the autographed Wayne Gretzky picture from when he was, uh, this is 1994, um, still with the Oilers at that time, and it does have COA on the back of it. That I found that behind the bed of the house. And then random things like this, the complete belly dancer guide. I don't know what you're doing right now, but I bet you're not belly dancing, but you could be with that book. Uh, I was surprised by sort of the depth of interesting things uh, that came out of that property. Uh, but I'm going to walk over kind of into what I considered more of the toy department. Oh, by the way, for all those people asking at home, hey, where are the Cabbage Patch dolls? I put them all in this one box. I don't know how many are in there. There's birth certificates and tags and shoes and accessories. This is a big box full of 1980s original Cabbage Patch dolls. Somebody out there watching is going to want that. It's up for grabs right now. Again, this auction sale is happening right now. And it's live until May 27th at kauctions.ca. Um, you're going to see some pictures online. You're going to see the large tin plate dollhouse set. What they didn't really show is that it has the furniture too. Um, if you're into 1980s sort of collectibles, you got the Masters of the Universe carry case. Uh, and incidentally, I'll try and read some of the comments as I go. Uh, I am kind of... Uh, chatting at the same time here. But if there's something you want me to show you that came out or that's at the auction, I can do that too. But please bear in mind, I am looking in front of me. So if I miss your comment, I'm not trying to be rude. I just am uh, chatting and trying to put on a show. <laughs> uh, so we have lots of tin plate and vintage vehicles going back to the 1950s. We have battery operated trucks and yachts and a helicopter with original packaging. And that's the key folks. It's almost as hard to find the box as it is the toy. And oftentimes the box is worth as much as the toy. So that was a really good find. We've got nice early John Deere Ertl play sets. We've got the Johnny Eagle Lieutenant pistol with firing caps. Uh, and he even has a, uh, it's accessories and bits and pieces in there. We've got a Roy Rogers cap gun, sort of a project, but it comes with the Roy Rogers paint book, some very early press steel toys. Um, and, uh, oh, I see Kelly asked a question. Does anybody know about the new show Alex is a part of? Yes, I am continuing to do YouTube as you see me doing right now, but I will also have a show on a major streaming network. Um, so we'll have twice the Alex. <laughs> and for some of you, you're like, we, you're already twice enough for us. But um, I'm going to be a busy guy this summer. I can tell you that much. Back to what I'm doing here, though. Um, we have... Nice vintage tins. Look at this. You got the Mountie on the repeater tobacco tin there. That's an iconic tin. Um, you can't tell the scale. Like the, the ginger tin that's there is actually quite big. Look, there's my hand. That's a big countertop tin, Victorian sort of era. Really, really cool. Um, I went through this collection and I tried to pick out all the stuff I thought was the best or the coolest. Like this, West Clock's Art Deco alarm clock that uses the flashing light to wake you up. But it's sort of that early um, plastic, uh, it's, it's opaque, it's very cool. Um, I, it's one of the first collectibles I ever bought was one of those. Um, just absolutely love the Art Deco stuff. We've got all kinds of great dolls. Um, the Johnny 7 toy machine gun, Bob's your uncle asses that here yes it is where is it i don't know i'll find it for you before i go 
Um, we've got Lufthansa airplanes. We've got a Redline Hot Wheel case, Dinky toys, Corgi toys, um, all kinds of fun stuff. I'm kind of lingering in the toy department over here. I'm going to get back out of this and back into some of the other collectibles. Oh, those old scrapbooks I found in the garage and somebody said, you should keep those. Those are, I can't believe you threw them out. I didn't throw them out. They're right there. The scrapbooks are right there. Boxes full of Beanie Babies. We've got Corel and Pyrex sort of mixed into that. That's an early primary color bowl with some uh, Corel inside of there. The early Hudson Bay blankets. Four pointers. Those are real big. Um, anything that I thought was kind of cool or interesting, I kind of pulled out of that house to bring in. This was a neat piece. That's a very, this is the second pressing, I think, of the Wizard of Oz. Um, that's early 1900s. Found that in the basement of the house. Who knew it was there? I didn't know it was there. Let's continue walking. Oh, if you feel like you need a Tiffany lamp, there's a few of those. If you feel like you need a space ray gun, there's one of those. A Mouseketeer phone, Mickey Mouse phone. We got it. Um, pretty much everything. I sound like a used car salesman. <laughs> no money down, no interest for five months. That's what I sound like when I'm listening to myself talk right now. Uh, we've got vintage cap guns. So these are uh, Red Ranger cap gun sets. Uh, the Unical tanker truck. Again, mid-century modern style tin litho dollhouse. Absolutely stunning. There's actually quite a few dollhouses and uh, tin farm sets up at the top. Those are all in the boxes there. Um, what else we have going on? All sorts of cap guns and stuff. Let's move into some of the household things. There's the guitar I found in the basement of the house. Um, these books, uh, for whatever reason, these Stephen King books were left over from a storage clear that I did months ago. They forgot to put them through. So those are there. If you're a Stephen King fan, there's all sorts of books and novels, uh, big bundles of antique postcards. I mean, I'm talking big bundles of antique postcards here. Those came out of the attic of the ballerina's house. Um, and they are all so very cool. Vintage sunglasses. You got an assortment of those going back, you know, 1940s and 50s style sunglasses. Um, and glasses themselves, clocks. There was actually a surprising amount of cool stuff that came out of that house. All sorts of pictures and prints. Some are original, some are prints, but they're all very cool. Um, there's the gemstone globe. And when you see this sort of, that's just paper because it's still brand new. Just that protective paper was never taken off. So if you look at the picture online, don't worry. It's not that somebody's brush painted or anything. That's a protective wrapping still on the arm. And that is semi-precious, um, uh, sort of gemstone. It's a really interesting piece anyway. Uh, if you've ever seen those things up close before, they're very neat to look at. As I walk around, uh, we've got the uh, Child's Prayer antique back glass painted, some nice little pictures and things, and of course the, the primary Pyrex set in surprisingly not bad condition. It's got a little bit of scuffs on it, but it's not bad. Um, a whole bunch of skeleton keys. Now, if I recall, somebody was asking about the Johnny 7 uh, gun, the big one. And I know it's, oh, it's right here. There it is. The one man army for whomever was asking the one man army is there. It does have its original box. Um, I think there's a couple accessories that might not be with it. I think it had a grenade and a couple things that are meant to go with it, but the, it's really hard to find that thing in the box. And surprisingly, I've seen these go for over a thousand dollars. I don't think that's what that one's going to go for, but somebody somewhere has spent that much in the past. We have, uh, the little railway pin set nicely framed. Uh, all sorts of nice antique train sets that we've got here. Uh, some Marklin sets, an American Flyer, bags of Beanie Babies. What are they worth? I don't know. I didn't even look them up. For people who are really into Beanie Babies, I just grabbed randomly assortments of Beanie Babies. You will need to look at the pictures online because there might be one in there that's worth a whole pile of money. I have no idea. I didn't have the time or the patience to go through it. My loss might be your gain. Uh, there's all kinds of neat stuff in there. One of my favorite things that I found uh, out of the recent clear out that I'm doing was this Coca-Cola Bradford Exchange truck with tiny little Coke bottles in there. Very detailed, even the engine compartments open up on it. So cool, so neat. Lots of little tractors like the tin clockwork John Deere. Um, into the little bobbleheads, um, the Corgi aircraft, which I actually sold those things new when we were, uh, when we were there. Oh, somebody says Beanie Baby House is Ballerina's House, right? Yes. Um, I call it the Ballerina's House, but the Beanie Babies came out of there. Uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Beanie Babies will be at this sale. We have uh, vintage Christmas ornaments, um, some collectible action figures, uh, including, of course, Connor McDavid uh, with the COA. Uh, he's pretty collectible, one of the best hockey players out there right now, if you're into that stuff. Uh, Blue Mountain Pottery Duck. A lot of people were asking about this. They're like, wow, that Blue Mountain Pottery Duck's quite collectible. Well, guess what? There it is. 
Um, I was pretty impressed with this large cut glass punch bowl uh, on its special base. Uh, the cups need some cleaning. She was a bit of a smoker, so that will need to be cleaned up, but it's glass. It should clean up okay. I uh, went to the effort of cleaning up the punch bowl itself, and it's in phenomenal shape. And uh, the Le Cru La Creuse, I was saying La Cru I was saying the tea. I should know better. We're supposed to be supposed to speak French, and yeah, I can barely speak English. Just listen to me mumble. Uh, but the Le Creuse um, cast pots, which um, you see them at antique shops, they can be even a couple hundred bucks used. And then the Martha Stewart style, uh, it's Martha Stewart, but it's it's the same quality as Le Creuse, and it's beautiful blue pot. This is the one my mom was really interested in. I didn't know she was, otherwise I would have kept it aside. Um, this, I found this in the attic uh, when I crawled up in that attic space and you guys saw me digging around with all the dust. Wrapped amongst some papers was this beautiful antique carved glass fruit bowl. It's silver lined and has silver etching and detail around it. It's in phenomenal shape. It's probably one of my favorite pieces. I didn't see a maker's mark, but it is a nice high quality item. Uh, and then, of course, your random sealskin boots. Um, all sorts of things. Here's the um, uh, the vintage Victorian photo album with contents, with pictures. Uh, doctor's colorblind uh, roto wheel. So to tell you, you know, I guess it if to tell you if you're colorblind or not. Um, we've got uh, not nice vintage comic books, loads of books, furniture, and everything in between. This is going to be a very interesting sale. The pictures are up right now. Again, it's at kauctions.ca. Look for the curiosity sale, which is May 27th. You're going to see all this stuff and more going up for August. Look at this. If you're into cookbooks, this is all. these are all the vintage cookbooks. That family lived in that house since 1949, as it turns out. And these are all the cookbooks that were in that shelf. Um, oh, you know what? Hang on. Somebody said the color wheel might have been for aluminum trees. You might be right, actually. Um, because he was a doctor, I thought it was a doctor's wheel, but yeah, that might have been the one that you shone at the aluminum trees. I should ask my mom. Hey, mom, is this what you used to have at the tinsel trees? Would you shine that light at it to make it different colors? Huh? Okay. You're correct. Whoever said that, I was wrong. My mom remembers them from when she was a kid, that that is what you would shine at your tinsel tree. So I'm wrong. It's mislabeled the auction. That's completely my fault. Goes to show you learn something every day. And I'm not too proud to admit that I was wrong. <laughs> I think that's one of the things you got to do when you're in this business is you take your best wild guess and you throw it at a wall and hope it sticks and uh, and be open to the uh, the corrections when they come in. Some nice vintage cameras. We got an Agfa and a Brownie, uh, both with their leather cases. I can't tell you guys how much stuff is here. Like there's almost a thousand items surrounding me right now, but so much good stuff. I hope you guys have a chance to check it out. Um, I'm going to take a second to read some of your comments here. Oh, look, there's an American Flyer set with its original box there, too. All right, I'm going to flip this around. <laughs> that is a lot of talking. I think my jaw actually hurts from all this yakking. <laughs> but, guys, this is a fun sale. There's all kinds of cool stuff. I really hope that you uh, check it out. Again, go to kauctions.ca. You can bid on it right now. Will they ship to your house? Probably, if you live on planet Earth, Castner ships pretty much everywhere. So guys, again, check it out. It's going to be a fun sale, a great sale. We'll try to live stream it when it happens on the 27th. As for me, I can see that our friend Taylor's over there. She's got the tags for me for my next batch of stuff to drop off for a future sale. Stay tuned. Lots more to come. And guys, we'll see you all soon. Um, I will try and drop a direct link into the uh, description later on, but I'm out and about, and this is live, so I'll have to do it later. But again, kauctions.ca. Look for the May 27th sale, and you might get yourself a treasure that you saw on the TV show. <laughs> we'll see you guys, and have a lovely day. Bye for now, everybody. Bye, guys.